Joining an Alaskan fishery for king crab fishing. Our characters are Yuri and Captain Joe. Yuri is a newcomer to an Alaskan fishery, worried about language barriers. Captain Joe is an experienced captain of the fishing vessel, offering guidance and reassurance. Hello, Captain Joe. I'm Yuri. I'm excited to join your Alaskan fishery for king crab fishing, but I'm also a bit worried about not fully understanding instructions or safety procedures, as English is my second language. Can you help me navigate this? Hi, Yuri. Welcome aboard. Don't worry. We'll make sure you're well prepared and comfortable out on the water. Safety is our top priority and will communicate everything clearly to ensure everyone understands, regardless of language barriers. Thank you, Captain Joe. I appreciate your reassurance. Is there anything specific I should know or do to prepare for the fishing trip? Before we head out, we'll provide thorough safety training and instructions on how to handle equipment and perform tasks safely and efficiently. We'll also have safety briefings in multiple languages if needed, and you're encouraged to ask questions if anything is unclear. That sounds reassuring. I'll make sure to pay close attention during the safety training and ask questions if I need clarification. What about communicating with the crew while we're out at sea? We have a diverse crew with members from different backgrounds, so we're used to communicating effectively despite language differences. We'll use visual cues, hand signals, and simplified English to ensure everyone understands their roles and tasks. Plus, you'll have a buddy system, so you'll always have someone to turn to for help or clarification. That's good to know. I'm relieved to hear that there are strategies in place to facilitate communication. What can I do to improve my English skills and feel more confident while working on the fishing vessel? Practice makes perfect, Yuri. Take advantage of opportunities to interact with English speakers, both on and off the boat. Engage in conversations. Listen to English podcasts or radio. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. Your English will improve over time with practice and exposure. Thank you for the advice, Captain Joe. I'm feeling more confident about joining the fishery now. I'm eager to learn and contribute to the team. That's the spirit, Yuri. We're glad to have you on board, and we'll support you every step of the way. If you have any other concerns or questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Let's make this fishing trip a success together. Planning to open a franchise with a former Olympian. Our characters are Lisa and Mark. Lisa is a former fencing Olympian with aspirations of opening a franchise. Mark is a business consultant providing guidance on franchising. Hello, Mark. It's Lisa. I'm considering opening a franchise connected to my name, leveraging my background as a former Olympian. Do you have any advice or insights on how I can make this venture successful? Hi, Lisa. Great to hear from you. Opening a franchise can be an exciting opportunity especially with your reputation and recognition as a former Olympian. Let's discuss how we can turn your vision into reality. What specific ideas do you have in mind for your franchise? I've been thinking about a fitness and wellness franchise that incorporates elements of my athletic career and promotes a healthy and active lifestyle. I want to inspire others to pursue their fitness goals and achieve their full potential, just like I did as an Olympian. That sounds like a fantastic concept, Lisa. 
Leveraging your personal brand and story can definitely attract customers who are drawn to your values and experiences. Have you considered which franchise model would best suit your goals and resources? I've been exploring the options and I'm leaning toward a franchise model that offers support and resources for franchises while allowing for flexibility and creativity in implementing my vision. I want to maintain a high level of quality and consistency across all locations while also allowing for local customization and community engagement. That sounds like a sensible approach. Have you researched franchising opportunities in the fitness and wellness industry? And do you have a sense of the market demand and competition? Yes, I've been doing some preliminary research, but I could use some assistance in conducting a more thorough market analysis and identifying potential competitors and collaborators. I want to ensure that my franchise stands out in the crowded fitness market and offers something unique and compelling to customers. I can help you with that. We can work together to gather market data, analyze consumer trends, and evaluate the competitive landscape to identify opportunities and potential challenges. We'll also develop a comprehensive business plan and strategy to guide the launch and growth of your franchise. That would be incredibly helpful, Mark. I appreciate your expertise and support in navigating the complexities of franchising. I'm excited about the prospect of sharing my passion for fitness and wellness with others and making a positive impact on their lives. It's my pleasure, Lisa. I'm confident that with your determination, leadership, and unique perspective as a former Olympian, your franchise will be a success. Let's get started on turning your vision into reality and creating a thriving business that reflects your values and inspires others to lead healthy, active lives. Addressing concerns about job prospects for history students. Our characters are Rachel and Professor Adams. Rachel is a history student expressing concerns about job prospects after graduation. Professor Adams is Rachel's history professor offering guidance and reinsurance. Dialogue. Hi, Professor Adams. I've been feeling a bit anxious lately about my job prospects after I graduate. As a history student, I'm not sure what kind of career opportunities are available to me. Can you offer any advice or reassurance? Hello, Rachel. I completely understand your concerns. It's not uncommon for history students to feel uncertain about their career paths. However, I want to reassure you that there are many valuable skills you've developed as a history student that are highly sought after in various fields. That's reassuring to hear. Professor Adams, can you elaborate on what skills I've developed as a history student that could be beneficial in the job market? <laughs> of course. As a history student, you've honed critical thinking skills, analytical reasoning, and the ability to conduct thorough research and analysis. These skills are highly transferable and applicable to a wide range of professions, including law, education, research, journalism, and public policy, among others. I haven't thought about it that way. It's good to know that the skills I've developed are valuable in different fields, but I'm still worried about finding a job specifically related to history. Are there any specific career paths I should consider? Absolutely. While traditional career paths for history students may include roles in museums, archives, or as historians or researchers, there are also opportunities in areas such as heritage preservation, cultural tourism, and public history. Additionally, 
many history graduates pursue further education or training in fields like library science, archival studies, or digital humanities to broaden their career options. That's helpful to know. I'll definitely explore those options further. Do you have any advice on how I can enhance my job prospects as a history student? One way to enhance your job prospects is to gain practical experience through internships, volunteer work, or part-time jobs related to history or your areas of interest. Networking with professionals in your field, attending conferences or workshops, and building a strong online presence through platforms like LinkedIn can also be beneficial. Thank you so much for the advice, Professor Adams. I feel much more optimistic about my future career prospects now. I'll start exploring different opportunities and working on building my skills and experience. You're welcome, Rachel. I'm glad I could offer some guidance and reassurance. Remember, your history degree has equipped you with valuable skills that will serve you in your future career whatever path you choose to pursue. If you ever need further assistance or advice, don't hesitate to reach out. Volunteering to help seniors. Our characters are Emily and Mrs. Johnson. Emily is a student interested in volunteering to help seniors. Mrs. Johnson is a senior living in the local community. ESL Dialogue. Hi there, my name is Emily, and I've been thinking about ways to give back to the community. I've heard that volunteering to help seniors can be really rewarding. Do you have any advice on how I can get involved? Hello, Emily. It's wonderful to hear that you're interested in volunteering. There are many ways you can help seniors depending on their needs and your interests. One option is to volunteer at a local senior center or retirement home. That sounds like a great idea. What kind of activities can I help with at a senior center or retirement home? There are plenty of activities you can assist with, such as organizing games and social events leading exercise classes, or simply spending time chatting and providing companionship to the residents. Those all sound like meaningful ways to make a difference. Are there any other opportunities to volunteer with seniors? Absolutely. You could also consider volunteering with organizations that provide services to seniors in their homes such as meal delivery, transportation services, or home maintenance assistance. Hmm, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about volunteering in seniors' homes directly. How would I go about finding opportunities like that? You can start by reaching out to local community organizations, senior centers, or churches to inquire about volunteering opportunities. They can often connect you with programs and services in need of volunteers. That's helpful advice. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. I'm excited to explore these volunteering opportunities and make a positive impact in the lives of seniors in our community. You're very welcome, Emily. Volunteering to help seniors is a wonderful way to give back and connect with others. I'm sure you'll find it to be a rewarding experience. If you have any more questions or need further guidance, feel free to ask. Good luck with your volunteering endeavors. Thank you so much. I'll be sure to reach out if I need any more assistance. Have a great day, Mrs. Johnson. Learning to fix U.S. Army trucks. Our characters are Jake and Sergeant Miller. Jake is a new recruit from El Salvador, learning to fix U.S. Army trucks. 
Sergeant Miller is an experienced sergeant providing guidance and training. Hi, Sergeant Miller. I'm Jake, the new recruit assigned to work on fixing U.S. Army trucks. I'm eager to learn, but I'm also feeling a bit overwhelmed. Can you give me some guidance on how to get started? Hey, Jake. Welcome aboard. Don't worry. I'll show you the ropes. Working on army trucks can seem daunting at first, but with the right training and experience, you'll get the hang of it. Let's start with the basics. Thanks, Sergeant Miller. Where should I begin? First, familiarize yourself with the different types of army trucks we have and their components. Each truck has its own specifications and maintenance requirements, so it's important to know them inside and out. Got it. Should I also learn about the tools and equipment we use for repairs? Absolutely. Knowing how to use the right tools for the job is crucial. I'll walk you through the common tools we use, such as wrenches, screwdrivers, and diagnostic equipment. We'll also cover safety protocols to ensure you stay safe while working on the trucks. That sounds important. I'll make sure to pay attention to safety procedures. How can I gain hands-on experience with fixing the trucks? You'll learn best by doing, so I'll assign you to work alongside experienced mechanics to observe and assist with repairs. You'll start with simpler tasks and gradually move on to more complex repairs as you gain confidence and proficiency. That sounds like a good approach. I'm eager to start learning and contributing to the team. Great attitude, Jake. Remember, it's okay to ask questions if you're unsure about something. We're here to support each other, and I'm confident with the dedication and perseverance you'll become a skilled Army truck mechanic in no time. Thanks, Sergeant Miller. I appreciate your guidance and support. I'm ready to dive in and learn as much as I can. That's the spirit, Jake. Let's get started on your training, and don't hesitate to let me know if you need any assistance along the way. Shopping for Vintage Clothes Our characters are two friends from Scotland, Emma and Sophie, who are discussing their experience shopping for vintage clothes. Hey, Sophie, I had the best time yesterday. I went vintage clothes shopping in the city. Vintage shopping? That sounds like a lot of fun. How was it? It was amazing. I found this beautiful 1950s style dress. It's so unique. Huh. That sounds lovely. What made you decide to go vintage shopping? Well... I've always loved the style of past decades, and I wanted to add some vintage pieces to my wardrobe. Plus, it's more sustainable than buying brand new clothes. That's a great point. Vintage shopping is a way to be fashionable while reducing waste. Did you go to a specific store or market? I went to a few different places. There's a charming vintage boutique downtown that has a lot of high-quality items. Then I visited a flea market where I found some unique accessories. It sounds like you had quite the adventure. Were the prices reasonable? Hmm, well, some items were a bit pricier than others, especially the designer pieces. But I also found affordable options. It really depends on what you're looking for and the condition of the clothes. I'd love to try vintage shopping someday. Did you have any specific era in mind when looking for clothes? Yes, I was particularly interested in the 1960s and 1970s styles. I love the patterns and vibrant colors from that era. Those decades had some iconic fashion trends. 
Did you find any other treasures besides the dress? I did. I found a retro leather handbag and a pair of vintage sunglasses that I adore. They complete the whole look. It sounds like you really scored some great finds. Do you have any tips for someone who's new to vintage shopping? Absolutely. First, it's important to know what your measurements as vintage sizes can be different from modern ones. Also, take some time and carefully inspect the items for any damage or wear. And don't be afraid to negotiate the price, especially at flea markets. Those are great tips, Emma. I'll keep them in mind for when I decide to try vintage shopping. Thanks for sharing your experience. You're welcome, Sophie. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. It's like a treasure hunt, and you never know what unique pieces you might find. I'm looking forward to it. Who knows? Maybe we can go vintage shopping together next time. That sounds like a fantastic idea, Sophie. It's even more fun when you have a shopping buddy. Applying for a waiter position without experience. Our characters are Alex and Rachel. Alex is a student applying for a waiter position. Rachel is the manager of the restaurant. ESL Dialogue. Hello, my name is Alex and I'm interested in applying for the waiter position advertised at your restaurant. However, I must admit that I lack experience in the field. Is there still a chance for me to be considered? Hi Alex, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for your interest in the position. While experience is certainly beneficial, we also value enthusiasm, a positive attitude, and a willingness to learn. Can you tell me a bit more about yourself and why you're interested in working as a waiter? Of course, I'm a dedicated student looking to gain practical experience and develop valuable skills in a fast-paced environment. I'm a quick learner and I'm confident in my ability to adapt and perform well in this role. Additionally, I'm passionate about providing excellent customer service and ensuring a positive dining experience for guests. That's great to hear, Alex. Your enthusiasm and positive attitude are definitely qualities we look for in our team members. While you may not have direct experience as a waiter, do you have any transferable skills or relevant experiences that you believe would be beneficial in this role? Yes, absolutely. I have previous experience in retail, where I developed strong communication and interpersonal skills while assisting customers and handling transactions. I'm also organized, reliable, and capable of multitasking effectively, which I believe are important qualities for a waiter. It sounds like you have some valuable skills that could translate well into the waiter position. We provide training for all new hires, so you'll have the opportunity to learn the necessary tasks and responsibilities on the job. Are you willing to commit to training and put in the effort to excel in this role? Definitely. I'm eager to learn and willing to put in the effort to succeed. I understand that it may take some time for me to become fully proficient, but I am committed to doing my best and contributing to the success of the team. That's wonderful to hear, Alex. I appreciate your enthusiasm and willingness to learn. Let's move forward with the application process and we can discuss further details, including training and scheduling. If you're selected for the position, thank you for considering joining our team. Thank you, Rachel. I'm excited about the opportunity and I look forward to the possibility of working with you and the rest of the team.